How's it going? Glad you could stop by. I'm doing this with my hands for no reason. I'm back. Uh, glad you guys could join us, uh, jo join me, yes, yes, the, the royal us, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Give me your first question. Fire away. What's the worst meal I've ever eaten? Well, we went to a little restaurant. This was on a lunch break from work. A, a co-worker of mine went to this place, a little place that had just started. We ordered our food. It took almost a half an hour for them to bring out the food. Neither one of us got what we ordered. We got he heavily changed stuff. You know, it's like I got a burger of some sort, but it was had nothing on it that the menu said was, was supposed to have on it. So we sent it back, and I think we got, I think we actually had to get our food to go because it took him another 20 minutes or so. I mean, I only have a one-hour break for lunch. took that long for them to bring it to us, and as I recall, it wasn't all that great. What we finally ended up eating was not great anyway, so we didn't go back to that place. Uh, yeah, fun story. I used to eat Chef Boyardee raviolis all the time when I was a kid. Loved them. One time about 12 years ago, between 12 and 15 years ago, opened a, opened up a can of them, put them in a bowl, microwaved them, and they seemed to fizz more than usual. And I wasn't sure what was up with that. And I thought, okay, I just got them a little too hot. So I thought, well, whatever. Ate it, and the taste of them was a little bit off. So that kind of put me off of raviolis for more than a decade. And I don't know if they put some kind of carbonation of some sort into them, and they just put a little too much in that batch. But whatever. I'm eating them again, long story short. There's a place up in Portland. I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's a seafood place. It's Northwest Seafood Company or something like that. And uh, the the stuff we had, um, had the side was, the vegetable was spinach, and it was sautéed in garlic. There was so much garlic in that spinach, you could not taste the spinach. All you could taste was garlic. In fact, until lunch the next day, all I could taste was garlic. I brushed my teeth that night. I brushed my teeth the next morning. And still, I had the garlic taste in my mouth for like 12 hours. I mean, the, the food was okay, except, and I like garlic. But, oh my God, they put, must have put three or four loaves of garlic, uh, cloves of garlic in there. Loaves of garlic? But, uh, yeah. My thoughts on iced tea. I really like it. Pretty much all I ever drink is iced tea and water. I don't drink coffee. I'm just not a coffee drinker. No sweetener. I do not like sweetened tea. I don't know about you, but when I drink sweet tea, and it's it's a southern U.S. thing. I don't know where it came from or what. But when I drink sweet tea, I'm more I'm thirstier after I drink it than before I drink it. Kind of that that totally defeats the purpose of having a liquid refreshment. So it's like yeah, no no sweetened tea. Plus, diabetes runs in my family, so it's like if I can excise unneeded sugars out of everything that I eat and drink, then yeah, so much the better. I can do without sugar in my beverages, but one thing I have a terrible weakness for is salt. Of course, I do have to watch my salt intake uh, because I am prone to high blood pressure. So if they could make a salt that doesn't have salt in it, that would be awesome. So come on, science. My favorite meal of the day, I guess, not necessarily for the food, but probably just for the atmosphere, I guess. That's the wrong word, but it probably is dinner, just because I'm at home. It's the end of a work day. I'm with the family. So even though burgers are my favorite food, and I only ever have burgers at lunch, and I never have them at dinner. So. That's what we call a trade-off. Red Robin, if, if any of you go to Red Robin, if you've never ordered... They, they have, you know, sauces that you can order on the side, a little cup of sauce. They have a roasted garlic aioli. In my opinion, that's proof of God right there, that God exists. It's that roasted garlic aioli. Since nobody asked, um, my favorite fast food, probably my favorite is Carl's Jr., which in some parts of the country is Hardee's. And I think in Oklahoma, I think you have both. They, they, they Venn diagram somewhere in the middle of the country because the lettuce on the burgers at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's is always so fresh and crisp. 
they have the best veggies that they put on burgers anywhere. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Wow. It's a good question. We'd have to travel back in time to ask the first chicken. Philosophers have been wondering that for eons. I haven't, but philosophers have. Do we own any pets? No, we don't. We had a cat for 18 years. Yes, 18 years. And she passed away in 2014. So, and we've thought about adopting a new cat, but just haven't, haven't really brought ourselves to be able to yet. And she was just a wonderful cat. And just probably the fact that it was difficult to, you know, let go of her was, is probably one of the reasons why we have not uh, bothered looking into adopting another, another pet ser uh, seriously. And our yard is not fenced in, so it wouldn't be ideal to have a dog. Uh, we, we don't mind it. We don't not like dogs. We like all animals, really. Oh, that's one thing I could have told you, could tell you guys about. The amount of wildlife that we have around here is ridiculous. I mean, we, we live in a rural area. I think I've mentioned this before. <clears throat> we have families of deer that wander through our yard regularly. And the fawns are about as, well, the last time we saw them, the fawns were maybe hip high. So they, they were just tiny little things. They still had their spots on them. And they're just, you just want to run out and hug them, but you'd scare them off because they're wild. Oh, let's see. Ducks. We have a creek that runs along near our property, so there are ducks in the creek all the time. And, of course, the usual things like birds and uh, squirrels. We have a lot of squirrels here. And recently we've seen a chipmunk. Yes, a chipmunk, which is about probably about as big as, as the cell phone, you know. And those those things are cute. Oh, God, those things are so cute. But they are fast. I mean, you blink, and that thing is three feet away. Uh, but, yes, chipmunks. And recently we've seen there's been a family of skunks in our area. That uh, Every night we see them wandering around foraging on the ground for food and whatnot. And so we've seen a fox in our yard. So, yeah, we this is a, our own little wildlife sanctuary out here. So, yeah. Oh, raccoons living? Yeah, we have raccoons around here, too. We don't see raccoons very often anymore, strangely enough. We used to see them a lot. A 24-year-old cat? Good Lord, I didn't know they could live that long. Yeah, our kitty uh, had gone deaf and mostly blind by the time her life was over. So she lived a long, happy life with us. She got lots of love, goodness knows, from us. So it was it was time to uh, let her go. So, yeah. Uh, favorite animal? Hmm. I don't know if I really have a favorite animal. I, I like all animals. Uh, cats would be, I mean, the whole time I was growing up, we almost always had a cat as a pet. Uh, so cats is probably my go-to default answer. I like cats. Pretty much any animal, I've, you know, in my opinion anyway, I can just instantly feel my blood pressure go down and just my general stress level. So yay animals. Have I ever done stand-up or sit-down sit down comedy? No, I haven't, other than when I attempt to be funny on this channel. Oh, very important question. What is my favorite color? It's funny because before we lived in Oregon, my favorite color was blue, and now my favorite color is dark green, you know, kind of like that forest green color. So it, it's I blame all the trees that are around us. Uh, yeah, the calendar behind me. Um, that is, it's a Grateful Dead album cover. The calendar is a Rhino Records calendar. So every month they have a picture of a different release they put out. Last month's was uh, Van Halen singles. This month's, it's the Grateful Dead. That usually comes, the Rhino calendar usually comes as a freebie from indie record st stores. You have to buy something and you get a Rhino Records calendar for free. But House of Records almost always has a bunch of copies left over at the beginning of the year. So I usually get one for free. Not that I don't buy my share of stuff from them anyway, but you know, everybody probably has a box of random crap lying on their desk. That's mine. Just in case anybody has been dying to know what I look like in sunglasses. These are Rhino Record sunglasses. So anyway. And that's my closet back there. Fascinating, I'm sure. Oh, here we go. Pardon my scalp. This is a pen. I don't know if it uh, writes anymore. Oh, gosh, it does. How about that? 
But uh, I think it's a little duck head. Entertaining, huh? Again, you have to wonder wh why. I... Of course, things don't always have to have a constructive purpose, do they? Sometimes you just need something like that. And here we have an interesting little... This one can be kind of an ASMR type of thing, too. Cool, huh? Yeah. And I can't remember how long I've had this silly thing. I've had it for a long time. So someone say, Wonder Tubes. So this apparently is a Wonder Tube. But yeah, it's kind of one of those meditative uh, ASMR type of things. So I don't know, is ASMR strictly sound or can it be visual also? But uh, yeah. Very cool little thing to watch. It's got all sorts of little confetti type things, star shaped ones and moon shaped ones and all sorts of things. And it's my favorite color, which is green. So that helps. And this, I don't know what it's made of, but it is heavy. I don't think it's any kind of a, I don't think it's glass because you can see it's kind of frosted. And this thing is heavy, a pound and a half, I'd say. And for as small as it is, my last few summer goals, I'm supposed to have goals in the summer. My goal was to stay sane and to stay COVID free. And the, the, I've so far I've, well, one of those I've been successful at, but I'm not sure about the other one, but, uh, I guess I guess that's a reasonable goal is to try and minimize the stress in your life, especially with with all the stuff that's going on. So, yay goals! Right? Interesting that we're finding out a lot of what uh, a psychological <clears throat> psychological toll a pandemic can have on the population. Not that I want to get into negative stuff. It's a happy channel. Make some funny faces. This one isn't funny enough for you. That's what my brother says. I have a funny face. So. so Ben wants a funny face. How's that? That's kind of a Jack Nicholson, isn't it? Ways like get a load of me. Can't do the voice very well. No. I don't feel as old as I actually am. So when you know when I hear that people were born in you know ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. It's, it just kind of weirds me out, you know, <laughs> just because I just, I, I'm almost 50 years old and I don't feel 50, so, which I guess is a good thing. I mean, I, I'm a creature of habit. I like things in their place where they are, but I also kind of like every once in a while mixing things up, moving things, things around you know, for a forever evolving organizational paradigm. How's that for fancy words? Yes, next on my list of topics, Kanye West is running for president. How much more 2020 can we get, honestly? We banded together so much as a country in the wake of 9-11, it practically brought, brought tears to my eyes. You know, for once we weren't bickering about health care or immigration or gay rights or whatever, any of that stuff. We were concentrating on comforting each other and healing. And now look at us 20 years later. And I almost dropped my sandwich. Thanks, Trump. You still have respect for America. Well, thank you. I know it, that's a hard thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's hard for me to have respect for America, honestly. Right? <laughs> but, but that's a whole other subject. I try not to get political on my videos because Tom's Hit Parade is a happy place, happy music place. So it's exhausting, isn't it? Just everything, you know? So here is the box. Let's, let's do, go ahead and do the unboxing, huh? Yeah. My trusty blade. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. And then this is the box in a box. And of course, as you can see, it is a vinyl record. 
I suppose it could be a calendar, couldn't it? <clears throat> Not a huge calendar person. But yes, this is Harry Styles on vinyl, his uh, debut album. Yes, I have, have it on CD, but uh, I just, I've been wanting the vinyl. And um, I actually returned something to Amazon not too long ago, and it gave me a big credit on my account. So I thought, hmm, what can I spend it on? It, it's burning a hole in my digital pocket. So, which I, I also have, um, since the first of the year, I was able to pick up a used copy of Fine Line on vinyl. So now I've got the entire Harry Styles album discography on vinyl, which also means I can take the CDs and uh, sell, them, sell them to the local store for trade credit. There's a madness to my method. Have I ever counted how many CDs I have? I have close to 3,000. The last time I actually counted, well, I count one shelf, and then I multiply it by how many shelves I have, and then that's the average rough CD. Uh, last time I counted that way, I had 2,800, and that was about a year ago, so I'd estimate it's probably about 3,000 now. With the bargain bag CDs that I keep and stuff, Although probably now that I think of it, it probably is still well under 3,000 just because I have gotten rid of a handful of them. So, yeah, holy crap is right. Every time I think about pruning my CD collection, I end up pruning, you know, far fewer than I wanted to. And even though, as I said earlier, there are some that I haven't listened to in 10, 15 years. Oh, no doubt, of course. Yeah, I have uh, three of their albums. Yeah, and I also have Gwen Stefani's first two solo albums. So, yeah, I like No Doubt. Even though I'm not a huge ska fan, I still like No Doubt. Do I normally pay full price for CDs? Maybe half the time do I pay full price. Well, I mean, I pay full price for new releases when they come out, obviously, because I don't want to wait to get them. But uh, most everything else, most catalog titles and stuff, I usually get those used. So I guess probably about a 50-50 split. And yeah, CDs are generally overpriced, I would agree. What's my least favorite Weird Al album? Oh, as I've probably mentioned before, in my Weird Al week back in 2018, I counted down all, I ranked all of Al's albums from, from worst to favorite. Now, I can't, now I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was either Alapalooza or Bad Hair Day, I think was my least favorite. Just because that was probably mainly because that was a period of time that I wasn't really plugged into music. And so... The, the parodies that, that he did at the time were just not, I just didn't strike me as anything great. And that his originals at the time were just kind of average too. So, but I think it's right around that time that the mid to late nineties, I think is when my least favorite period of Weird Al. So. Oh, sixties Motown. Oh yes. What, what would music be without Motown? Honestly, I love it. It's, it's just perfect. For, you know, it's like when you don't know what you want to listen to, just put it on in the background, and 60s Motown always lifts my mood. Always. And something now that I think about it I should have put on in the last couple of months with all this stuff going on was Motown, because it, it always it always cheers me up. So, yeah. I've heard Pat Boone singing uh, Tutti Frutti by Little Richard. If you love that song, the little, little Richard version, don't listen to the Pat Boone version if you know what's good for you. Do I buy 45s or 7 inches? Almost never. And it's actually something that I was going to do as the closing for my room tour video, which I'm still going to do, trust me, is show you my very small collection of 7-inch singles. So look forward to that. And yeah, I have a few record store day 7 inches. So, uh, But yeah, otherwise I just don't buy a whole lot of 7-inch singles. Have I ever written a love song? No. I just, yeah, I'm not uh, not a music musically inclined person, however you do. Uh, and I'm also terrible at miming guitar, if you hadn't noticed. Uh, yeah, just not musically inclined as far as instrumentation or about, or as far as writing, like poetry or writing song lyrics. Just do I sing? Um, no, I don't. Well, well I, I can sing, but nobody deserves to hear that. I mean, I suppose I probably sing better than I think I do. <clears throat> I don't play any musical instruments now. I took, was it one year of clarinet lessons? Yeah, I wanted to be really cool in high in grade school, so I took clarinet lessons. But yeah, gave that up after a while. Didn't even go into like the marching band or anything. So, 
that is basically the limit of my music experience. Oh, I, could, I could probably be a decent drummer, contrary to the uh, attempts at dancing that you've seen in my videos before now. I think I pretty have a pretty darn good sense of rhythm. Do I have a favorite video opening? Like a favorite gag I've done? Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favorites, my most recent favorites was, and I had planned it for like six months when I first started conceiving my end of the decade list. I, I had that, that intro in mind. Okay, it's time to show you my big ass list. That That's one of my favorites. And I tried to do a couple ones, uh, um, backward, you know, reverse motion videos of me eating a piece of candy. And it just went went on for too long. It didn't go well. So I'm going to try and refine that idea and bring it to you later. But the, yeah, a couple of, oh, and I did one intro that was completely backwards. I actually wrote out the words phonetically backwards and spoke them and played the video that way. That was fun. My favorite part of YouTubing and why did I restart my channel? And I just realized now that I can barely read my handwriting sometimes. Anyway, my favorite part of, part of YouTubing has probably been the friends that I've made. I've made some really, really close and meaningful and uh, very good friends through this channel that I now cannot imagine not having in my life. It's just, you know, I did not think that was going to happen when I restarted my YouTube channel. And why did I restart my YouTube channel? Well, I hesitate to even use the word restart because I'd only posted one video and I didn't like how it turned out is basically why I didn't post any more after that. Went three years, as I drool on myself, three years without posting any more videos. The reason I restarted and stuck with it was I finally came to the realization, yes, my first few videos were, are going to suck, but I'm going to get better. And, and I have, I think. I've refined my editing technique, tightened up my videos a little bit more, made them flow a little bit easier, gotten looser in front of the camera. If you go back to watch my first few videos, hi. Welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Today I'm going to talk about, and it was very, very stiff and uh, awkward and stuff, so. Best and worst videos live streams I've ever made. Yeah, I think the best videos and, and also my favorite were my uh, my interview with Skip. It's gotta be the best ones. And I think my end of the decade turned out pretty good. And my last, my 2019 end of year turned out pretty good. My 2018 one, I was a little unhappy with. I didn't put as much of a polish on it as I wanted to. It was kind of a rush job, so I didn't like that one. But uh, yeah, my skip interview, I think, was uh, my favorite one. Uh, best live streams? I don't know. I, I think this Lunchtime with Tom has been a good idea so far. It's been really, really entertaining. So, And of course, you guys have been a big part of why it's so entertaining. So yay you. What's my favorite part of the video making process? Probably the editing. The getting in front of the camera part is is often nerve wracking. You know, try as I might, I try to, you know, just relax, try and be myself in front of the camera, let it flow and stuff. But sometimes that's really hard. And sometimes I get, when I keep messing up, I get riled up and that makes me mess up more. And it's kind of a snowball effect, you know, but I have been, I've been getting better at relaxing, being myself. But yeah, editing is probably the, uh, the most fun part. I've been playing more with my uh, video editing software. I'm getting a little bit more uh, fancy in my editing. So, Actually, when it comes to the backtracks videos, my favorite aspect of it is um, the research. For some reason, I just love researching and digging up the info and finding the right way to uh, compile the information and stuff. So that part of it is fun. What do I use for editing? I use Adobe Premiere Elements. This is basically the, the scaled down version of Adobe Premiere. It's very, very nice. I uh, Another reason why I did, probably didn't go ahead with my YouTube channel back in the day, three years ago, well, now it's been five years ago, was because the only u editing software I had was the junky little thing that came with Windows, and it was awful. It was <laughs> the bare minimum of uh, editing tools in it. So, But yeah, uh, picking up uh, Adobe Premiere Elements was one of the best things that I ever happened. There's probably a better video editing software out there, but Premiere Elements has pretty much all the things I could ever want. That's the telephone. And for dessert, an apple. Yay, nutrition. Here's a question for you all. <clears throat> what variety of apples do you like? I prefer the Fuji or Gala apples. 
I don't mind the honey crisp, although they are a little too sweet. But it's just, you know, ever since I discovered Fuji and Gala apples, the Red Delicious have just been blah. They're like the white bread of apples, you know. Candy or chocolate? Chocolate. Now, see, that's a question I can answer right here and now. No problem about that at all. I didn't even show you my uh, what I picked out for dessert. A pair of Kit Kat Dark Minis. Dark chocolate is one of, another one of the things that I just love. I mean, I like the sweet of milk chocolate, but there's just something about that. It's just got that richer taste to it. And that's, and that's another thing that, you know, you asked me 10, 15 years ago, I would have preferred milk chocolate over it, but I have since turned to the dark side. <laughs> there's your knee slapper joke for the day. White chocolate, it's okay. Yeah. I like it for something different. Dark chocolate, semi-sweet, milk chocolate, white chocolate. That's my hierarchy, my, my tier list of chocolates. Electric Oreos. Ben, you are just weird, okay? <laughs> you get dropped on your head when you were a baby. <laughs> Made it in time for dessert. I actually don't have any dessert. Oh, actually, I do. I am glad you said that, Ben. <clears throat> I've got a few things. Hopefully they're still edible. I was gonna do this and I'm glad you said that. Okay, Kit Kat candy bars. Um, for those of, you, those of you who may or may not know, Kit Kats are very big in Japan and they do Kit Kats in all sorts of different flavors there. Well, somebody from my, my work had been to Japan recently and uh, brought back a, an assortment of them and I snagged three of them and I've been wanting to try them out and what better place to try them out than here. I can give you a live unwrapping and taste test comparison. I hope I have enough water to cleanse the palate between Kit Kats. So the first one we have is peach flavored Kit Kat. So let's try that one. Okay, the peach Kit Kat is white in color. So let's try it here. Interesting. I can kind of taste peach. A, a peach chocolate, which I guess is what this is. So if you can picture peach blended with chocolate, although I hate to say this, but it kind of reminds me of the toothpaste, toothpaste that I use in the morning. Terrible thing to say, I know, but. Uh, so that is the peach Kit Kat. Cleanse the old palate here. Let's see, which ones do I have left? I've had them for so long that I cannot remember. It's weird, this one is, it has only Japanese text in it. I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't know what it was. Well, I'll give it a try. <clears throat> I don't like, oh, maybe this is just the regular chocolate. Yeah, this is just a regular chocolate, okay. So we know what that one tastes like. So the other, the third one that I have is grape, and I'm a fan of grape. So let's give a try to the grape flavored Kit Kat. Hopefully it's not a toothpaste experience like the peach one. Interesting, it's a, a pale lavender color, which doesn't uh, translate well in the light here. Yeah, grape. What does that remind me of? Oh gosh, I think it reminds me of uh, <laughs> great toothpaste. It actually does not remind me of toothpaste, thank goodness. Um, a bubble gum that I had when I was a kid, and I'm afraid to tell you how many years it's been since I've put bubble gum in my mouth, and it instantly reminds me of bubble gum. But yeah, I kind of like this one actually. Yes, I do. I do like grape, so it shouldn't surprise me much that I like the grape Kit Kat. So, <clears throat> excuse me. But now it's a bittersweet thing because I've had these for probably a year. 
had them in my drawer, forget, forgot that they were there. I was waiting for, I was going to do a, uh, a mini mukbang video, just, you know, pre-recorded video, just a taste test of them. But it's much more fun doing it here in the live, uh, live stream, isn't it? So, okay. Not feeling the peach Kit Kats, but uh, I like the grape ones. Very good. So, there you go. And this one, I'm sure, is just chocolate. Well, let's double check. Yes, I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't know what it was. Because, uh, and to answer your uh, thing about the Harry Potter jelly beans, um, I, I don't like tasting th something that I don't know what it's supposed to be, what it is or what it's supposed to be. So I probably would not like the Harry Potter jelly beans. Sorry, Ben. I think this is regular chocolate. Yeah, yeah, it's regular chocolate. The grape aftertaste was interfering a little bit, so. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me for the season finale, possibly series finale, although I never say never, uh, of Lunchtime with Tom. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for those of you who watched and commented live. And for those of you who will watch uh, in replay, I hope you guys are having a great day and week and month and are staying safe and healthy. And uh, love you guys. You take care. Bye.